Hello and welcome to the International Daily Roundup by People's Dispatch, where we bring you some of the major news developments from across the world. Our headlines, all four police officers involved in George Floyd's death have been charged. Over a dozen homes have been demolished in the occupied Palestinian territories. Argentinian feminist and LGBTQI movements commemorate the Ni Una Menos anniversary. We begin with an update from the United States where protests against police killings and racism continue. All four of the expelled Minneapolis police officers accused of the killing of George Floyd are to be indicted under various charges of murder. The announcement was made by Minnesota's State Attorney General Keith Ellison on June 3rd. Derek Chauvin, the prime accused in the case, will now be charged with second-degree murder. Earlier, third-degree murder charges had been pressed against him. The other three police officers will be charged with different counts of aiding and abetting a second-degree murder and homicide. The police officers killed Floyd while trying to arrest him. Derek Chauvin placed his knee on Floyd's neck for nearly nine minutes. The announcement of the charging of the officers comes after eight days of countrywide protests triggered by Floyd's death. The four police officers were expelled within hours after video footage of the violent arrest attempt at his death went viral. However, only Chauvin was initially charged. The US has reported anywhere between 900 to 1,000 cases of police killings annually since 2015. In 2019 alone, Law enforcement officers killed over 1,100 people while on duty. In the past six years, however, prosecutions took place in only around 4% of these cases and less than 1% ended in convictions. In the entire state of Minnesota, where Floyd was killed, only one police officer has been convicted in this period for killing someone on duty. However, the protesters are determined to seek justice. The number of arrests in these protests has risen to nearly 9,000. In our In Focus section, we bring you an interview with between author Vijay Prashad and scholar Noam Chomsky on the protests as well as the policies of President Donald Trump. As we are talking, the streets of the United States are on fire. People have decided that they're just not going to take it after the murder of George Floyd. And even liberals seem to be losing patience. I read George Packer. He wrote an article with the title, We are living in a failed state. It's quite astounding to see a liberal write about the failed state. And of course, it's heartbreaking to see the murder of another African-American, but then to see people come on the street. I mean, this reaction must, I mean, you know, give us at least some sense of hope. Well, actually, the, what's happening does give a sense of hope. First of all, the murder of George Floyd is not an unusual event. I mean, events like this used to happen pretty frequently and nobody paid any attention to them. What's encouraging, hard to say this in the midst of these horrors, but what's encouraging is there is a reaction that shows that there has been a kind of improvement in the level of civilization in the country. Things that passed under the radar before, at least a lot of people noticed. Uh, they didn't protest before, but they're protesting now. But let me say a word of criticism about it. I can understand it, sympathize with it, good thing. But notice the focus on the few policemen. One of them is a murderer. Uh, three others stood by and did nothing. And there's a lot of denunciations of those three who stood by. But it's useful every once in a while to look into the mirror. Can you think of anyone else who's stood by for actually you know, all of our lifetime, long before, while all these things are happening and didn't do anything? People like me, for example, and the rest of us. Uh, what have we done to alleviate the circumstances that lead to this? But yes, we can certainly blame the policemen for standing by, but there's a deeper problem, deeply ingrained in white society. Even people who are activists and protesters, we pretty much stood by. Uh, this, the protests today are very reminiscent of others. So in 1992, after the Roger, Rodney King murder by police in Los Angeles, and uh, uh, after the 
policemen who killed him were released on, you know, without from the court without any punishment. There were huge protests. Um, a week of protests, I think about 60 people were killed, or federal troops were brought in. Uh, uh, the effect, as usual, was to shift public attention to rioters. We have to have more law and order, more force. That's the typical response to protests that become violent. Uh, where we're living, in, except now there's more protest. And I should say this raises a question that activists should ask themselves. They should always ask themselves. You have to distinguish between tactics that make you feel good and tactics that actually do good. The ones that make you feel good are easy. Like if I can break a window and show how angry I am, it makes me feel good. Is it doing good? No. It's a gift to President Trump and the right wing. They love it. And, they, and so it's maybe hard to restrain yourself in times of bitterness and horror and crisis. If you ask yourself, what am I trying to achieve? The answer of what to do is quite clear. Over time, consistently, nonviolent protests which are hard, take courage, or strength. These have shifted opinion in support of the cause we're advancing. Violent protests consistently have been a gift to the harsher, more brutal elements in the society. And you have to think about that if you're serious about the cause. It's hard. It's not easy. It's easy to sympathize with especially blacks who had the boot on their neck for 400 years. You know, can't criticize any reaction. But on the part of others, they should really be thinking about these things. More than a dozen Palestinian homes were destroyed by Israeli occupation forces in various parts of the occupied West Bank on Wednesday. Most of the demolitions happened near Jericho City, where occupation forces destroyed seven homes and animal shelters. Another affected area was the Masafar Yata neighborhood in the south of Hebron. The neighborhood falls within the area C jurisdiction of the West Bank, which is solely controlled by Israel. It has been targeted by the Israeli military and settlers in the past. The demolition drive is taking place in areas which are part of the proposed annexation of the Jordan Valley by Israel. Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu plans to annex these areas by July. On June 1st, the occupation authorities issued an order to demolish more than 200 Palestinian structures in the Wadi al Jos area of occupied East Jerusalem. Alleged lack of permits, perception of security threats and various other excuses have been used as a justification to demolish these homes and property. Palestinians are also being arrested in large numbers ever since the annexation plans became public. Such acts are intended to force these Palestinians off their land and have been compared to ethnic cleansing drives. And finally, this Wednesday, Argentine social media was painted with pink and green, colours of the country's feminist movement. June 3rd marked the 5th anniversary of the formation of the New Unameos or Not One Woman Less movement. Tens of thousands of women and queer people held a virtual mobilization on the occasion to reiterate the need to end gender-based violence. <laughs>
To know more about these stories, visit our website peoplesdispatch.org and follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Thanks for watching. Yeah, cantar, que vamos a triunfar, avanzar.